Gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY22 earnings conference call of AU Small Finance Bank. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10-0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Asim Pant, VP Investor Relations. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Margaret. Good day to everyone and welcome to AU Bank's earnings call for the fourth quarter of FI22. We thank you all for joining the call today and we hope you and your dear ones are safe and well. So approximately the first 20 minutes of the call, we will have brief remarks by few members of our senior management, followed by 30 to 45 minutes of Q&A. Firstly, we will have our MD and CEO, Mr. Sanjay Agarwal, share his thoughts on the performance and overall outlook for the bank. He will be followed by our executive director, Mr. Uttam Tibrewal, who will share his thoughts on business outlook for assets and liabilities. And finally, we will have Mr. Vikran Jitli, head of collections, who will discuss asset quality for the bank. Besides them, we also have a few other members of our senior management to answer any other questions uh, you might have. For the benefit of everyone, we would humbly request that the number of questions per participant be restricted to a maximum of two and to join back in the queue or mail us in case you have any further questions. With that, I will request our MD and CEO, Mr. Sanjay Agarwal, to share his thoughts on the current performance and outlook. Thank you, Akeem. Uh, good evening, everyone. Namaskar. Uh, Thank you for joining in. We hope that you and your dear ones are doing well and keeping safe. Order 4 FI22 marks the completion of our 20 quarters of our banking operations. I would also like to begin by congratulating everyone on completion of five years as a bank. We have crossed this important milestone with flying colors. In 2017, we had 403 touch points in 10 states, which grew to 919 touch points in 18 states and two UTs into 2022. From lending to 5.6 lakh customers to serving our 27.5 lakh customers now. We were a family of 8,500 people to a winning team of 27,800. Build the liability franchise, earning a deposit base of 52,500 crore plus. Scale the asset book from 10,700 crore to 47,800 crore with superior asset quality. Build a state-of-the-art tech ecosystem. Established gold standard is governance. And this happened in spite of headwinds of demotization, GST, NBFC crisis, PMC crisis, private sector bank crisis, and battling the pandemic have only made us more resilient and confident in our customer and product segment. The tailwinds of digital adoption gave us the strength to venture into the journey of many first, like AU0101, credit card, QR code, video banking, etc. The team has shown incredible commitment, ownership, bias for action, and entrepreneurship. The story remains very exciting for me personally from the last 27 years. AU is on the track of empowering India financially, digitally, and socially. Thanks to your support, we remain one of the most exciting franchise of the country. Very grateful to the government, regulators, board, you, the customers, the team, the shareholders, for bestowing us with so much love, affection, guidance, and trust. For me personally, FI22 was year of year of roller coaster ride. Quarter one was washed out with due to devastating second wave, where we lost so much both in terms of lives and livelihood. In quarter two, we faced an unnecessary misunderstanding as well as baseless rumors around certain personal moments in our bank. On a personal note, I lost my father, the founder promoter of AU Bank. He was instrumental in shaping the person I am and had laid the foundation of our bank. In the later half of the year, we witnessed the third wave, although it turned out to be quite limited in its impact. Nevertheless, growth came back in the second half of the fiscal. Hope you have seen the recently declared quarter four results. The last quarter remained very high in terms of numbers from deposits to access to payments to digital. Some highlights are agenda. We launched 32 new touch points in this quarter. We hired 2,300 plus people. Our deposit grew by 46%. And we can, we, our focus remained on low cost stable fund, and we reduced our cost by 88 bps in this year, and we maintain ample liquidity. 
It is worth around 10,000 to 95 crore of loans in this last quarter, the highest ever in the history of AU. Our balance sheet size grew by 34% year on year, net worth grew by 20% year on year, and our capital adequacy is at 21% plus. We also generated the highest ever operating profit in this quarter. Our ROE stood at 1.9 and ROE at 16.4%. Uh, 6, Asset quality is getting back to pre-COVID level. Our GNPA reduced to 1.9 eight from 2.6 quarter and quarter. Net NPA has been reduced for 2.5 from 1.3 quarter to quarter. As a bank, the improving operating environment and our strong operating performance and higher resolution in the state accounts during quarter four gave us some flexibility around our quarter four numbers, but we chose to remain more major to secure our future by putting more money into the provisions and I further strengthen our provisioning policy, committing us to higher coverage in the future as well. We have not taken any contingency provisions to PNL, rather we have created an additional floating provision of 44, 41 crore. Given the secure and retail nature of our book and our historical experience, in my view, we are currently significantly overprovided with PCR of 75% plus provisions around restructuring, contingency, and floating. The main reason we have tightened our provisioning policies is further to structurally create a buffer creation mechanism as growth picks up. More from Vikrant on this. The risk from geopolitics and micro environment had led to strong inflationary pressures on our operation with costs are going up in everything, from salaries and related expenses to employees to tech and maintenance contracts. I know that OPEX is high in the current quarter, and we hope to go back to normal number in the mid to long term. Similarly, in the rising interest rate environment, income from treasury operation is also expected to remain subdued in coming quarters. However, our cost of funds continues to decline, and we think there is still some room for repricing. Our digital initiatives are progressing well and are providing a visible uplift in our pace of customers' acquisition. Notably, our 40% of new customers acquired in quarter four were through our recently launched digital channels and product, that is 0101 credit card, video banking, and UPI QR. Our five SBUs, Digital Banking, Credit Card, Merchant Solution Group, Reads, Home Loan, has already presented two AU Insight sessions in last quarter. I hope you have gone to know a lot more about their business strategy, the team, and the outlook. In greater detail, the remaining five SBUs will also be presenting in the coming month. Governance has always been the backbone of our growth since the start of our journey which has been validated time and again by markets, regulators, and rating agencies. Last quarter, we, have, we were joined by Shri Etar Khan Saab, ex RBI Deputy Governor on our board, as an independent director. And this quarter, I take this opportunity to welcome Shri Kamlesh Vikramse on our board as an independent director. I believe bank will eventually benefit from its rich audit experience spanning over four decades, and I personally look forward for his mentorship. With his induction, the overall board, uh, board strength has now risen to 10 directors and eight being independent. I'm also thankful to the board for agreeing to reward the shareholders of the bank as we celebrate completion of five years of banking journey with an approval of issuance of bonus share in the ratio of one to one. The bank board also has approved a dividend of one per share for FI22. Both these measures are subject to shareholder approval. I'm very happy to share that K rating upgraded the bank's long-term rating to double A stable and retained our short-term rating to A1 plus. This is strong validation of our banking franchise and asset quality despite the pandemic-induced challenges. In the end, I would, uh, I would like to say that we are watchful of inflation, interest rate cycles, geopolitical situation, and effects of residing pandemic. However, I think that what we have faced in the last two years and survived was much more challenging, and we are far more hopeful about the coming times. I'm very excited about the India story, one of the world's fastest-growing fastest economy with the largest, uh, largest youth population in the world, rising global competitiveness, rising economic influence, and the strong central bank policies. Although we are cautious in short term, but very, very, very optimistic in long run. We understand that being the largest small finance bank of the country put us in the position of a great responsibility. We are always mindful of our duties as a credible bankers. We promise you gold standards in risk management, governance, compliance, and integrity. We remain indebted to our regulators, government, stakeholders, and the board to hold our hand and to keep us on the right path. We continue to invest in our 10 strategic business units and shall always be promising and likable franchise to be joined by people. 
thank you so much stay safe you know and want to hand over to upam for his business outlook and strategy thank you sir thank you sanjay namaskar and good evening everyone i hope you are happy and healthy i will now provide you with an update on all our businesses including assets and liabilities apart from this even though proving to be a challenging year across economic situation as well as geopolitics it has proven to be a year of resurgence for indian corporates post the difficult 2021 going into fy23 indian businesses seem cautious on the impact of increasing energy prices and uncertain trade environment however given our high domestic consumption improving on ground activity and india's gdp growth outlook we are quite positive on the business outlook for the year ahead at the event we continue to proactively tackle the challenges we calibrate our next steps with agility and track the market head of its performance to deliver across the business and financial metrics as sanjay mentioned in our journey of over 27 years of building trust au bank also celebrates its fifth anniversary as a small finance bank and we feel a sense of pride in having weathered tough times in our early years and risen off it out of it with tremendous strength and character to become india's largest small finance bank the infinite passion and hard work of 27800 plus au employees growing brand love from customers confidence of our esteemed shareholders have been the hallmark of these five years of banking for au bank importantly our asset growth was complemented with a robust asset quality with a gross npa coming below 2% at 1.98% and net npa reducing to 0.5% this is a remarkable achievement given our gnpa was 4.3 same last year our total collection efficiency for the year stood at 106% the normalization of our gnpa to pre covid levels has been in line with the narrative of deeper on ground customer engagement and problem solving approach as we mark our bills in the next financial year we continue to focus our efforts towards building a robust tech led retail franchise in india by building a granular casa portfolio drive growth on existing assets products strengthen the asset quality investing in technology for au001 innovate across new products like credit cards and qr payments and increase brand equity for au bank Our new business financed 85,000 plus vehicles during Q4 FY22, amounting to a total disbursement of Rs. 3,667 crores, registering a growth of 25% year-on-year and 20% quarter-on-quarter. Total AUM of new business is now Rs. 17,300 crores, with an average ticket size of Rs. 3 lakhs. At AUM level, 60% of the financing is for new vehicles, 38%. is for use and refinance and 2% is for two wheelers the demand towards light commercial vehicles and passenger vehicles have been stronger than other sectors in material business demand is gradually coming back with q4 fy22 being the same disbursement equivalent to same quarter last year at rupees 2116 crores total aum of sdl business has now reached to rupees 16524 crores across two lakh msmes Registering the growth of 15% year on year. Our housing finance business, which recently presented their views in the AU Insights session, saw strong demand in Q4 with a total disbursement of rupees 673 crores, registering a growth of 54% year on year. Total AUM of housing business is now rupees 2,654 crores, across 27,000 dwelling units, registering a growth of 19% plus year on year. Bulk of this portfolio is also eligible for long-term, low-cost energy refinance, which further helps the team to deploy more. Our commercial banking businesses like business banking and agri banking continue to do well and gain market positioning and establishing themselves. Both of these businesses are granular, working capital, term loan financed to MSMEs with average ticket size of sub one crore, and lend against the balance sheet of MSMEs. In Q4 FY22. Commercial banking business saw disbursement of rupees 2,529 crores, a year-on-year growth of 104%, with most of the businesses eligible for low-cost refinance. Our digital efforts have shown promising results, with almost 40% plus newer customers added to the bank in Q4, coming through AU0101, video banking, credit cards, and UPI QR codes. 
we are looking at our digital banking strategy to complement our physical banking strategy and the physical model allow us to be better positioned for gaining a larger share of overall pie. Detailed individual business numbers are provided in the IR presentation. Further, at the ongoing AU insight session, the leadership of various SVUs have been presenting their views and outlook. And I hope you had a chance to go through the same. I'm quite happy with an exponential growth across our brand metrics, including awareness and consideration with our ongoing campaign. It's been heartening to know that people have been able to associate with the Badlao Hamseya campaign and acknowledge that AU Bank is trying to bring genuine Badlao in banking practices. We will continue to focus on building brand awareness and consideration. In the past few quarters, we have emphasized on growing our CASA balances and pricing our deposits optimally to gradually reduce the overall cost of borrowings. Through targeted efforts, we delivered Card deposit growth of 57% year on year and 44% quarter on quarter. And star deposit growth of 156% year on year and 9% quarter on quarter. This enables the bank to maintain an optimal CASA ratio of 37% compared to 23% in Q4 last year. All these also help to reduce the overall cost of our deposits to 5.8% in FY22 from 6.7% in FY21. 64% of the saving accounts customers acquired in the year are active on our AU0101 app, and 77% of the current account customers acquired in the year are active on internet and mobile banking. This also reflects the increasing preference of our tech savvy customers to become digitally native. Rishi has spoken extensively in earlier quarters about the AAEDR framework that the Lazardis franchise follows. AAEDR stands for acquisition, activation, engagement, deepening, and retention. As we mature, we have prioritized engagement and deepening to position AU Bank account as the primary account of the customer. To this end, we have segregated our sales and customer service teams to pay greater attention to customer experience in branches. This has resulted in 71% of CAR and 55% of SAR customers regularly transact with us. Furthermore, 1.9 lakh unique AU debit card holders transacted in Q4 our debit card transaction volume has increased significantly, dropping 4 lakh transactions in March 22. And spends have consistently been 100 crore plus in the last few months. To increase value share of the customers and embed them with the bank, we work on differentiated RM model, which aim to fulfill the needs of our customers and maximize lifetime value. This focus approach has resulted in our products per customer to grow to 1.7 for our SAR customers and 1.9 for our car customers. 62% of our current account and 47% of our saving account customers use two or more of our products. The delta generated in customers' A and B via the engagement hook is anywhere between two to eight times, depending on the hook, as compared to a customer who is not engaged. We have expressed earlier that metros and urban markets will drive our liabilities growth. We currently have 184 branches in urban areas, with 64 of them having opened in FY22. 16 of these new branches with an average vintage of six months have already ramped up their deposits to 5,200 crores. This reflects the unprecedented response we have received in these newer urban geographies from high quality retail customers and provides us the confidence to further penetrate and focus on these markets as we look to ramp up our deposit franchise. We continue to work with our partners to further cross sell and engage the customers with ICCI Prudential, Future Generali for life insurance, and ICI Builda, Care, Tata, and Chola for general and health insurance. On the investment side, our mutual fund AEM crossed 100 crores this quarter, and we have close to 60,000 clean one trading accounts through our partnership with Mobilal Oswal Financial Services. In conclusion, I would like to say that these are very exciting times for the bank as we achieve our five year milestone knowing fully well that five years is a small dot or a blip in the journey of generations. Our efforts on urban-focused branch expansion, customer engagement, people capability, and constant digital innovations ensure that we are all prepared to scale the business. With comprehensive merchant solutions and a good foundation of current account and SBL customer base, we are working towards scaling the current account deposit book sustainably this financial year. With this now, I hand over to my colleague Vikram Jethi for an update on collections and asset quality. 
I will meet you again during the q and session. Thank you so very much. Please take good care. Thank you. Thank you, Udamji. Good evening, everyone. I'll be sharing brief perspective on asset quality. Business activities across sector have resumed normalcy, which resulted in better customer cash flows. We saw collection efficiencies north of 100% during the entire quarter. Average collection efficiency in Q4 was 108% compared with 106 in quarter 3. Our gross NPA reduced by 62 bits from 2.6% in quarter 3 to 1.98 in quarter 4. In absolute value, there was net reduction of 133 crores from 1058 crores in quarter 3 to 924 in quarter 4. Net NPA reduced from 1.3 in quarter 3 to 0.5 in quarter 4. We saw gross reduction of 329 crores in quarter 4 from Q3 closing NP of 1058 crores, resulting in 31% resolution during the quarter, wherein 65% resolution happened through normal question efforts and about 28% resolution happened on account of security enforcement, wherein there was pause loss of approximately 38%. Another 7% resolution was on account of technical write off Similar trends have been observed during FY22, and as we had highlighted same in our last call as well. This clearly illustrates the secured and small ticket nature of our book, as well as resilience of our borrower base. If we further introspect current GNPA pool of 924 crores, we have enforced security on 8% tool, and asset is in bank's possession. As of date, we have initiated legal recourse, either certainty or Section 70, on remaining 88% pool. On the balance 4% pool, we will be initiating legal recourse soon. In that share, all the underlying loans are granular and secure, and we expect recoveries or security enforcement in due course of time. As we have communicated in our quarter three commentary, based is on-ground feedback, we have identified non-workable pool wherein all collection efforts have been exhausted and bank has done technical write off of 23 crores in quarter four. Here, collection efforts are being abandoned and future recovery may happen through ongoing legal proceedings. We would like to mention that we have so far done recovery of 1.18 crore from technical write off of 62 crore done during the financial year 22. We shall continue to evaluate such non-workable pool in future as well and take appropriate measures. Out of total gross advances of 46789 crores as of 31st March, 69% of book has originated after March 2020, and 93% of this book is current with only 0.37% of GNPA. The resilience of this book has validated our approach of underwriting and customer segment big data. On restructuring, as of 31st March 22, standard COVID restructured book stood at 1180 crores, which is 2.5% of gross advances. Billing has started on 98% of the restructured book, and 10% of build book is NBA as of 31st March. Asset quality performance in the build pool has been well within expectations. ECLGS gross advances as of 31st March 22 stood at 866 crores, and NBA numbers are in line with overall book. Bank is carrying provision of 653 crores against GNP of 924 crores and has created an additional floating provision of rupees 41 crores in the current quarter, taking PCR to 75% against 51% coverage as of 31st December. Additionally, there is provision of 192 crores against standard restructured book. Furthermore, bank continues to carry contingency provision of 157 crores. Against GNPA and restructured book of 2,100 crores, we now have 50% coverage, including floating and contingency provision, versus 45% as of 31st December. This further strengthens balance sheet and makes us better prepared for any unforeseen events. Pertinent to note that bank has further tightened its provision, provisioning policy starting this quarter, whereby in our secured book, we will make 25% provision on 91 days, 50% on 181 days, 75% on 366 days, and 100% provisioning on 456 days. 
the policy on unsecured book is even more stringent. This makes us, this makes our provision policy one of the most conservative in the industry and will help us maintain higher profits on an ongoing basis as there is absolutely no change in our expected credit loss assumptions. As we head into FY23, while we keep our eyes on the risk on the horizon, we continue to remain cautiously optimistic, having the word for all the stresses and some more. Thank you so much for your time, and I now want to hand over to Asim. Thanks, Vikranji. Uh, Margaret, we can move to Q&A now. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Aditya Jain from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, good to see all the balance sheet strengthening measures. Um, if you could talk about the thought process behind uh, and you know the um, trade-offs between allocating some provisions as floating and contingent, um, how do you decide uh, the quantum of them and uh, what are the uh, advantages of disadvantages of one versus the other? So, uh, hi, Aditya. Thank you for your kind words. So, I mean, you know, uh, as per law also, we can't keep contingent provisions uh, as an open item, right? Uh, we need to uh, use it in somehow. So we, what we have decided is that, you know, let's strengthen our NPA provisioning policy and we'll keep the buffer out of the, you know, that contingent provisions to the normal provision. So that is one thing we, which we have decided from this quarter. And, you know, we just do not want to use any of the slower in and n right? So the, the balancing amount, if you see the overall provision for last quarter to this quarter, we really want to be similar that amount, which is 1,043. So the balancing amount we have built in the floating provisions, right? And floating provision is again to cover any kind of future alternatives, and floating provisions can't be used on the basis of management. It has to be approved by RBI. So that is why we really want to be more sure about our whole consistency there. And uh, so that's it, right? So we have actually have reduced our overall NPA, overall uh, risk-rated asset considerably, but the provision amount remains same. Got it. So, so there might be a certain rules based on which contingent you might choose to reserve, uh, reverse, uh, but floating you will retain on a longer basis. And uh, when if you choose to reverse, it will have to be with RBA approved. Correct. Absolutely. But, um, thank you. Um, on the um, on the on the liability side, um, so we've uh, continued to see a steady reduction in cost of funds. Uh, from a spread perspective, uh, going into next year, uh, could you talk about the share of uh, floating rate loans? You know, I, I think a large part might be fixed rate, but just the share of floating rate loans today on the book. Um, and uh, on the the average cost of saving deposits, and and would you be open to increasing um, that saving deposit rate if needed? Um, and just your overall outlook on margins uh, for next year. Thank you. You know, this is uh, two things we I already put it in my statement that inflation and of course the interest rate cycle looks tough in this uh, year. And we do not know how it will uh, span out in, in whole uh, current year. But uh, as far as we are uh, floating versus fixed uh, is, is to be seen, it is around 25% is our floating, 75% is fixed, but tenure is very low. And generally retail assets, you know, like wheels, SVL, are generally done on the basis of fixed because we also charge on a higher rate. The rate, the yield rates are 15% plus, right? So, and and of course, uh, as we move forward, you know, we really want to build more and more flexible uh, floating rate book, but, you know, the, like the housing one and the commercial banking space. So, once that share will go up, you will see our floating rate regime will also go up, right? So, so that's the way we want to manage it. And what was the other question around saving account? Sorry. Yes, yeah, so saving account, uh, the average cost of Saturday, um, and... Uh, 
would you be open to would you think about increasing that sar rate going forward the casa accretion has been really phenomenal so far uh, yeah. going into next year maybe other banks start to increase the sar rate we've seen some cuts through covid uh, so would you and doing increasing the sar rate? uh this is a question as of now but you know casa we are already pricing around 7% on a higher bucket right and uh, so as a as a uh, as a see i don't want to get it to that uh, level of higher rate ism but you know if market forces us we will see at at that time got it thank you so at the current cost of 5 5 and 1/2% got it so thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ratik gupta from guardian capital please go ahead hello yes mr gupta we can hear you please go ahead with yes. your question so yeah i would i just wanted to highlight towards the treasury section you can see that the revenue is growing at 10% while uh, the expenses have grown at a huge level in this quarter so can you highlight on the same because we are trying to understand what could be the treasury operation that has leading leading to high expenses in this quarter sorry the question is that please i repeat so the question is that treasury expenses yeah the treasury expenses went towards the profit Treasury expenses. This is we are talking about the segmental result that we would have put out in the uh, financials. Exactly. Yeah. So we are seeing that profit has grown only by two percent towards this quarter, and right. the revenue has grown by approximately ten percent. And actually, I wanted to understand what could be the reason that we are seeing a very less growth, and uh, what could be the major impact towards the treasury in the rising uh, interest rate scenario. So, I would say, if you see the interest rate uh, in the last quarter, kind of moved very sharply, especially towards the later half of the quarter, right? And we are just coming out of a very low interest rate regime. So, uh, as we move forward, there will definitely be, uh, you know, and that's what we have articulated in our presentation as well, and in Sanjay Ji's speech, that there will be some amount. We'll have to watch how the interest rate cycle plays out from here on. right uh, there could be uh, while we have don't really have a large npm impact this quarter but uh, unlike some of the other banks we will have to see how it behaves going forward so honestly uh, at this stage difficult to comment okay my second question is how will the interest rate impact on the nim over over the going quarter in the uh, in the upcoming like three four months so so no we have uh, we starting our cost of money around 5.6 and last year we had a cost of uh, fund overall basis of 5.9 so still we have some room available with us to manage uh, even a cost uh, cycle up by maybe 50 or maybe 75 basis point that's point number 1 and second you know we have the ability to transfer this uh you know price to the end customer because uh, my end customer is not rate sensitive right and we have also reduced over the year so and the, the kind of customer we deal in is is a pro market right and if the interest cycle goes up the entire ndsc entire that segment will also go up so i strongly believe that we can protect our names uh, as we move forward uh, in the, in the range bound interest rate cycle of course okay that's it from my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of murli from hk selen please go ahead murli your line has been unmuted please go ahead with your question yeah good evening one and all actually someone asked my question previously so i don't want any questions thank you The next question is from the line of Akshay Jain from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, sir. This is Akshay here from JM. So, so I have uh, two uh, questions. One uh, is on the uh, car growth. So, car has uh, seen a sharp uh, increase on a QOQ basis. So, any color on that? Plus, you know, is this a sticky uh, car, or and what are the levels uh, we are seeing in April? is there is there a car is run down or how is it the first question is this rishi can you answer this 
yeah yeah uh, i i'll take this one second so uh, see uh, you know the uh, the car book uh, is uh, you know the march quarter is always uh, a high uh, uh, for the car book and uh, if i were to give you a flavor you know um, the 20 about 27000 of our customers contributed to the growth of balances in the car book uh, in the uh, month of march right and uh, many of these are uh, almost 19000 of these customers are small businesses and proprietorships so typically what we have seen is that uh, you know average uh, uh, customers actually uh, uh, the balances in car go up uh, every year end like for example last year also the car amv was 1164 crores and the up was uh, uh 1632 crores and uh the, the same thing uh, holds true for this year also where we have grown uh, uh you know subsequently to 1600 crores of amb types so uh, there is uh, you know no hot money sort of uh, if that was the question uh, that we sort of save in the business and uh, a good amount of money actually came from the contractor segment so around 140 crores came from contractors who are uh, typically nhai contractors and the government releases money to them uh, in the year end so money comes from them and uh, that is how uh, this continues i do expect that uh, our uh, q1 overall uh, car balances we should be able to uh, you know be close to the uh, q4 numbers uh, uh, you know uh, by, by the time we end q1 of uh, this year because we substantially ramped up our overall uh, you know car acquisition like what uttam had highlighted we acquire something like 6500 to 7000 customers every month and uh, along with our fbl business we are very strongly positioned to uh you know address the merchant segment in the industry and build up on that so uh that is the way we are looking at uh, the work up and we believe that uh, we will be able to grow it uh, significantly in the years to come so what percent of uh, percentage of the car customers will have asset relationships with you currently it is about 15% of the customers have a asset relationship uh but uh, that is something that we are ramping up significantly like uh, i think what you also mentioned uh, we have a large qr base right so 62% of our qr are active 90% of those qr customers uh, actually have uh, you know current accounts with us and uh, uh, you know that money comes into our bank account so uh, uh that actually helps us uh, in a big way to build our car balances and uh, uh, so the strategy going forward is that uh, we very clearly looking at the manufacturing segment customers uh, manufacturing and services customers separately from the merchant segment customers and as a merchant segment customers are the one where au has a very strong franchise and capability and which is where you know we are building our digital lending capabilities as well as uh, you know the uh, qr and uh, pos related payment solutions so uh, which is where uh, i think our volumes will uh, go up significantly even today more than 80% of our uh, car book is actually uh, sole crops and uh, small businesses understood and the lastly on the am side so there is an item others uh, with an am of around 3000 odd crores so what will be the components of this others so uh, are in uh, sorry uh, akshay that is mentioned in the footnote on slide number 37 sorry 36 this is predominantly you know uh, fd against ods and you know treasury lending so those things are included to manage the retail liquidity understood okay thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nidhesh jain from investec please go ahead 
thanks for the opportunity sir so firstly on the growth uh, how should we think about growth uh, in 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 fy 2324 uh in last two quarters uh, uh, despite our caution caution uh, commentary cautious commentary we have grown quite well at 14% q on q uh, so how should we uh, uh, think about growth in next two years so next two years is difficult to comment as of now but i think this year you know the challenge remains to you know which is the interest rate cycles and of course the how the inflation but uh, as you already commented that you know what we face in last two years you know uh, is it was more what we would we could face now so i strongly believe that our deposit should grow in the range of maybe 30 35% and asset in the range of 25 30% you know and, uh, and and it's it's covering up you know lot these challenges you know if the challenges never exist in in coming time then the growth can be more right but uh, the kind of demand we are seeing in our we sbl housing and across spectrum right credit card you know or the commercial banking and so we are quite hopeful that uh, this year the growth can be um, as uh, pre covid levels sure uh, secondly uh, 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 how is the experience that we have outside of uh, rajasthan in terms of asset quality and growth and uh, just a, a, a question in, in ex, uh, extension of that is that uh, assuming that we have same product uh, product that we are operating over next 4 uh, to 5 years and same geographies we are operating how large uh, uh, loan book we can scale up over next 5 years on the same geography i think this is now uh, old uh, question that whether eu has the ability to grow beyond rajasthan we already demonstrated that in liability you know rajasthan is not leading the pack right is is rather maharashtra and then led by uh, delhi and of course rajasthan right so and the new book also like the credit cards the merchant banking solution is very well diversified across states and it, even in our wheel business as we are which which remains the oldest business we are seeing lot much uh, growth coming from the other states and that is the advantage of a bank right because banks generally don't uh you know challenge then does not get challenged because of geographies and all those things because generally people come and join and people have customer a lot of respect for the bank as a franchise right so i think i think we are not now very much worried about that we are a stand bond kind of uh, institution in coming time you will see us uh, in pan india operating for liability for digital for lot many things right so i think uh, the whole data metric shows that we are on right course short sure, short sure. any other question mr jain no uh, that's it on my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sonal gandhi from nirmal bang institutional research please go ahead Oh uh, yeah thanks for the opportunity sir uh, most of the questions sorry, have been answered mr gandhi i'm sorry mr gandhi you know very clear may i request you to come on the handset mode is it better now uh, not very clear ma'am if you are on speaker please come on the handset mode and i'll uh, no no i'm on the handset thank you this is better now thank you okay okay uh, so sir just uh, one uh, one question i had uh you know if i heard you correct uh, you know i mean 69% of our book is uh, you know kind of uh, aun is coming uh, post march 20 and the gnpa in in that book is just 0.3% so i wanted to understand what what kind of credit score should we expect in fi 23 fi 24 since uh, you know the incremental gnpa on incre- i mean gnpa on the incremental book is very very low so difficult to comment honestly so difficult but i would only assume that uh, the pre covid level the our whole gnp was around uh, less than 2% maybe around 1.5 1.3 you know kind of saying and net np was around 0.5 uh, but i think now the whole housing policy has been changed so uh, difficult to comment as of now because uh, it's very early days ियस 
so sir, just a couple of questions uh, on the restructured book and and the ECLGS pool. Okay, so we did highlighted that you know the overall uh, uh, the book performance is in line with the uh, overall book. Uh, but if you can provide some more uh, color, let's say in terms of uh, is there any uh, uh, geographical concentration uh, which is uh, not behaving as per the mark or uh, let's say the collection efficiency in some of the pockets is still lower than the pan-India average uh, would be helpful, sir. Can you answer? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, probably I guess this question was asked earlier as well. We have not seen any trends uh, which are, I mean, particular to uh, any state. I guess some, you know, prefer uh, the DSP number is around 2%. Uh, plus minus point, you call it, pretty much studied this, plus minus here and there. I guess I mean, this is sorry, uh, sorry, the same, sir, I'm, same line. I'm not able to hear you properly, sir. Are you getting better now? Yes, sir. So, uh, probably, I mean, you know, the early question was also in terms of are we seeing any, I mean, you know, state specific trends? Uh, there are no state specific uh, trends which are emerging. I guess 25 to 25 here and there, plus minus. I guess most of the states are in similar range. On the restructuring book, also, I guess we are seeing um, trends which are similar across the middle states. Okay, so there is, there is no geographical bias towards that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. And uh, so, last question from my side to uh, Sunday, sir. You know, so uh, with this, uh, you know, the uh, the two million plus of, in fact, two and a half million plus customer base. Uh, what sort of uh, data analytics, uh, you know, we run uh, since we have a thirty plus products now, uh, and what uh, what is the current product per customer, and what is uh, like say uh, our plan to take it to maybe two and a half to three. Uh, what we are doing on that one, sir, uh, on the customer leverage side? Yeah, I'm going to I will answer this. Sir. So, so on on uh, data analytics platform, we we have now uh, that uh, let's say minimum uh, quantity of data to analyze on. When we have set, built some models for that matter, all our new businesses like credit card is uh, largely uh, working on scorecard model in terms of origination. Similarly, on our uh, QR book, the way we are getting transactions, we have started uh, uh, lending to, to the customers this is their transaction data. So all those mm -hmm. things are getting built from a, a score cutting model. Uh, second aspect, which you asked about uh, product per customer, uh, this, this number at this point in time is uh, somewhere in the range of uh, 1.3, 1.4. And with digital channels coming in and uh, some of the digital-only products going uh, uh, getting adopted within our customer segment quite uh, uh, well, in last eight months of operations, we see significant uh, uptake coming in in the current uh, financial year or upcoming financial year. Having said that, we are uh, investing in our data, data analytics practice in terms of building data lake and uh, corresponding analytical models for this, and we'll uh, continue to update uh, in, in the due course of our communications. So, sir, any any target we have in mind, let's say uh, uh, to take this 1.0, 1.4 to 2 or 2.5 within two years, three years, or whatever? Uh, I mean, that would be too early to comment considering all those uh, investments are currently being made, but uh, okay. should be able to give some some uh, guidance in probably uh, three to six months time. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, that's it from my picture. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranav Mehta from Value Quest. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir, for taking my question. And congratulations on a very good set of numbers. Uh, so, first question is on uh, cost to income trajectory. So, in this year, we have seen almost 500 bits increase in the cost to income ratio. And I know the reason for it that you know, we are investing in digital and other initiatives. I just wanted to get a sense from you that how will this ratio now trend going forward over the next one or two, three year period? Uh, that is one. And secondly, if you can just give some sense on the, the timelines for this application of universal banking license and how are you thinking about you know, going going for it? We have a two questions. Yeah, thank you so much. Pranav, yeah. So, uh, so, I think the first, uh, uh, we also facing challenge on our OPEX, you know, because everything has gone to our next level because of this inflation, right? 
whether it's salary, related expenses, uh, traveling, convenience, phone, and also the generally we are seeing you know not much uh, cost around our opex now, but we believe that it is more of a supply issue and you know it will get adjusted as we got this scale. And you'll also agree that we really worked only for 10 months this year, right? So we had expense of 10 months, we had expense of 12 months, but a working of 10 months. So that has also impacted our OPEX. So, so for us, comfortable level is around 50, 52 uh, percent on an ongoing basis, and plus 5, 6 percent on our investment side, right, which we have shown in your presentation also. And so this time it is overshooted by 4, 5 percent, and it's got 60 percent. So it is above our comfortable level, but uh, we will do lot many things this year to really get back on our the comfortable level, which is around 55, 57 percent put together, both put together. So, but this remains a challenging work for us because we being in retail franchise, you know, we need to do lot much much uh, things on the ground. So sometimes it's in your hands, sometimes it's not. But I'm not too worried, honestly, on a on a, on a on a relatively high level because we have a better yield on our assets and our cost of fund is also getting get, get, is in manageable level. So, but we have to live with this, and I hope that uh, we manage uh, opex in 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 our stated uh, number uh, for this year. You know, the, your other question, you know, it is regarding uh, the universal license. So we are happy what we are doing as of now. We became largest SFB, and our job as executive is to really play whatever is given to to us. And presently, we are playing on SFB platform, and it, it is up to the regulator to decide that you know whether they, they really want to make us universal or not. But of course, we we uh, we have become eligible because the five year has gone on 19th April. So we hope that you know we perform like that that you know regulators allow us to become universal, but. We are very happy the way we are doing as of now, you know, and uh, in the near future it happens, it will be good enough for us. Sure. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavik Dave from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Hi, sir. Am I audible? You're not very clear, uh, Mr. Is it, is it better now? Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, sir, uh, for a good year. Uh, couple of questions, sir. One again, similar to the previous participant on the cost. Uh, just want to understand how, uh, and I understand 40-50% of our cost is variable and the remaining is fixed. Uh, how do we control uh, the cost when if growth slows down a little, like you mentioned? Uh, how do we uh, focus our attention to controlling that cost? Because around 10% of our cost is towards newer investments, which I think we will want to continue. But how do we uh, control cost on the BAU uh, when growth is a bit challenging on the ground, if at all? Now, you know, uh, it's a little hypothetical question because we already faced that year, last year, right? Because right. Uh, of uh, 12 months, you know, our execution on business happened only for 10 months, right? And we have booked uh, expenses for 12 months, right? So okay. and uh, and the way the whole scenario is being built, you know, especially in our market, which is uh, product, which is around wheels, SBL, housing, commercial, credit card, you know, everything is firing mm -hmm. so well. So there might be a slowdown, but I think our size is also not that much that it should affect us, you know, in near term. So and of course there is a variable cost uh, along with the fixed cost, you know, that can be manageable, right? And we have shown in last, uh, maybe in 2021 too, in the, in the year one pandemic, and last year too, that we can manage our cost. This time, it is because of inflation, right, which has really right. created uh, something something extraordinary on the balance sheet, which I personally feel that as, as maybe next one to two years, it will settle down, right, or it will get, the, uh, get some kind of transformation in overall uh, yield. So we Correct. have to wait for that. Um, otherwise, you know, uh, I, I, I strongly believe that AU is in good position in terms of managing any upward of interest rate cycle and, of course, this elevated uh, cost of operation for the next one to two years. Sure. 
So, sir, is it fair to assume that like the 61 or sorry, 57 percent for the year cost to income, and this quarter was a little elevated? Uh, do you think that the the guidance that we have of like sub 55 percent is that possible in FI 23, or will it will it be like uh, like 57 will come to 56 and then maybe slow down or like come down? Is that the is that a fair way to go? I believe so. I believe so. Okay. Understood. And the second question is a little long termish in the sense, uh, uh, give, uh, which are the products that you are most excited about, like going ahead next two years, where we have like in incrementally our cost of funds are coming down, uh, and should be somewhere around this range or marginally higher if interest rate cycle uh, is turning. Uh, which are the products that you think can scale up, uh, uh, and you are excited about, and any specific geographies where you are thinking that we are like generating or creating a right to win like we have done for like two three geographies where we were historically present including rajasthan any other geographies which you are excited about uh, more than uh, uh, more in, in the, for the next couple of years and the product that you are excited about i'm actually you know bakshar is there but uh, i can speak on his behalf that wheels makes me most exciting project because the overall uh, Uh, the pent up demand and of course the overall change in fuel you know the how the indian story is being built around the manufacturing all those things mm -hmm. so and our size is very very amazingly small you know we are just around 17000 crore of asset right right so i strongly believe that that book can grow in the north of 25% for next 5 years you know that's my own take Sure. Other than that, I think I'm I'm also bullish about housing. You know, very small base. We have started that two years back, in right. spite of pandemic, in spite of such, uh, so much of lockdowns. That mm -hmm. book is also going well. So that is, right. and I think the most important book and which can surprise us is our all uh, commercial banking, which is around SMEs and MSMEs. I think that scale can help those businesses much more. So, and of course, the credit card, you know, all those businesses. So, Bhavik. Honestly, I believe that we have a uh, lot much on platter, right? So right. hard to pick one or two, but uh, whatever I said is our top four, five, right? But right. generally, I believe that all our asset, the size, the market, the way we operate, and the whole seasonality around it, you know, is helping us to grow much better than the other competitors, right? In terms of geographies, I would say we are well settled in around uh, now 18 states. But if you okay. pick me, if you ask me one state for next five, ten years, I would pick UP. UP, okay, interesting. Yeah. And correct. And sir, last question is uh, on the asset quality. Uh, is there uh, like generally RBI does a yearly review? Uh, is that done? Uh, any outcomes? Anything to anything worth noting, or is was uh, business as usual? Sorry, sorry, I'm not able to understand that question. Sorry, so so what happens is like in banks, like there's an asset quality review that happens yearly, which RBI generally takes, uh, uh, like undertakes. Just wanted to understand, is that done for the bank? Uh, because you've not mentioned anything, that means that there is nothing to uh, report, right? Like there is no divergence or anything major that RBI has uh, come out with when it comes to asset quality. Is that a fair assumption? Yeah, I understand. So, uh, so we our inspection has been done up to March 20. Okay. So no, nothing, nothing was reported till now. That till that time, and now okay. we are on an automated process. So Correct. our 99.9 percent of assets get classified on on a real time basis through an automated uh, application, right? And that has sure. been certified by current account by the auditors, the external auditors, and that has also been verified by regulators. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right, that's helpful, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, all the best. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Mundra from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Good evening. Uh, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, and congratulations on your fifth anniversary, sir, uh, of the bank. Uh, <clears throat> I have two questions. One is, if you can tell us the gross slippages. Uh, without interquarter netting off for fourth quarter and maybe for F522. So the quarter that number is 292 crore. Sure. And if you have the number, sir, for financial year. 
So that I think uh, that would be around 1440 crore. We'll get on that. That will be also there in our uh, yes. uh, disclosures, but I think that number is around 1440 crore. Sure. Okay. And uh, secondly, sir, on your wheels, 14, uh, um, it's 1442. 14, sure. Okay, sir. Uh, secondly, on your wheels segment, if you if you can uh, bifurcate into maybe top four or top five kind of a product, uh, if if possible, that would be very helpful. And then I have a follow up question on that. So, sorry, your uh, voice is a little patchy. Can you just repeat that question? Yes, yeah, so sir. I was saying if you. Uh, we seem to have lost his lines. So we'll move to the next question in the meanwhile. The next question is from the line of Heath Timawat from MK Global. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just one question uh, relating to the tax expenses in the quarter. So the tax rate, if I calculate for the quarter, it is around 11%, which has been around 23, 22, 25% in the previous quarters. So what could be the reason for the low tax, ex tax expenses in the quarter? Hi, uh, so we got around 45 crore rupees refund, uh, which was adjusted in this quarter. Uh, this was mainly against piece of force, which was, uh, we considered while filing the return only. So it's related to previous year. The tax rate for the full year is? So, uh, for the full year, tax rate is around 22 percent. And uh, for this quarter, uh, this is the difference because of this refund only. Okay, okay, got it, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tipain Sheikh from Boyan Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, and thanks for the opportunity. I hope you can hear me. You're not very clear, Tipain. If you can come on the handset mode and closer to the phone. Okay. Um, so I hope you can hear me now. Yes, this is better. Please go ahead. Thank you. Right. So I just wanted to reconcile a couple of numbers. If you come to slide 35, and uh, if I try to reconcile that with uh, slide 6, okay. Um, so it's on the liability side, obviously. So um, if you look at the lower left part of uh, slide 6, it says that 66% uh, of our total deposits are retail deposits. Right, and if we check at uh, slide 35, um, it says that 49% uh, is the retail in the TD mix, not in the total deposits. Am I reading this correctly? That's right. So when you look at the TD mix, it's 49% uh, in the TDs is uh, retail. Right. So the TDs are 31,470 at the year end. Correct, and and this forty nine fifty one is the break out of that thirty one four seventy. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Dipin, right. it's a data keeping question. Can you please yes. email to us and we'll get back to you? Yeah, sure. No, the reason I'm asking this. Yeah. So the reason I'm asking this is that uh, the, again on the slide thirty five on the upper left side, the total deposits are fifty two five eighty five. So if I, so the remaining uh, bit there is certificates of deposits. Correct. No, no, no. So uh, the the first table on your and it's like 34. Actually, you're referring to 35. The first okay. table is the total deposit. Yeah, 34. The second table is the branch banking deposit. So it excludes uh, you know, the government uh, the CD, the the, the CD, which is 1500 odd crores. We have given it earlier, and uh, the last chart on that is the average monthly balance. So one, the first is end of period balance, the middle chart. And the last chart is average period balance for the month. Okay, I'm hearing you. All right. And and within the entire deposit mix, uh, if I may ask, is there you used to call, or I don't know what the term to use, is it non-callable? Non-callable. Yeah, so non-callable is on term deposits. Yeah. And yeah. while I don't have the exact number for March, but on an average, it is about 60%. Okay. You see, you have 
and you know which is uh, there to really manage the balance sheet at that point of time you know because it's not in our hand now it is in the hand of regulator to decide us that when can we use that but of course the situation like pandemic you know or situation like which is one of its own kind we we, we want to use that but it's actually subject to regulator and incrementally will i mean under what situations would you want to create more of floating provisions is that all Uh, so i think every quarter we will we'll take the call that you know how the whole scenario is being built uh, around the businesses and uh, and we really want to make our balance sheet more and more stronger and we have the contingency provisions of 157 crore as of now we have a coverage of 75% in terms of pcr so i think we have need to see the whole calculation and of course we hold a key asset around us so based on that every quarter will take the call accord with the help of board right so but yes of course endeavor is to really build more and more there uh and the next question is on spread and the overall provision on the balance sheet so sure, understood understood uh yeah. the next question is on spread the incremental spread have come down quite meaningfully for the quarter and there is a large gap of almost 90 basis points between outstanding spreads and incremental spreads uh do you think the incremental basis of spreads have narrow or bottomed out and it can improve from here on or we see our uh, spreads staying where they are right now i'm talking about incremental spreads now Commercial. Right, so, uh, Manish. Manish. So obviously, uh, you know, as the situation has uh, improved in the uh, on the ground, the demand is also picking up. So initial demand definitely has come in from the commercial banking sector, uh, which obviously uh, gets uh, where we directly compete with the larger private sector banks, and hence it's a price sensitive segment. But uh, as we move forward, definitely as Nielsen, uh, as BL also, you know. uh more and more demand comes up uh we will obviously and the interest rate cycle uh, start going up we have the ability to pass back that to our customers so we'll start doing that going forward what you have to also understand is uh the entire commercial banking book or at least most part of it is also eligible for some low cost refinance which kind of helps us uh, to maintain our uh, margins okay Uh, last question: What part of your book is floating rate in nature on the asset side? Right? So I think Sanjay, you answered that as the first question. The book is about 25 percent uh, on the floating side, and predominantly consists of the commercial banking and housing uh, loan book. Got it. Thank you. Those were my questions. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take one last question, which is from the line of Jay Mundra from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks again, uh, sir. If you can uh, bifurcate uh, the top five uh, uh, product in the wheels, seventeen uh, thousand uh, crore wheels portfolio. Many uh, hi, but career. Uh, you are wanting to know from a manufacturer point of view, or you are talking about uh, there it is in the line of Maruti no, no. Mahindra. No, no, not from manufacturing, but from functional uh, view. Maybe taxi, UV, or uh, yeah. if you have. Yeah. So we have. So we have close to forty-five percent of our application is in personal segment. So that is cars, essentially cars. And then we have about ten ten percent of tractor. We have five four percent of backhoe loader. And then between small commercial vehicle, light commercial vehicle, we have that spread out between themselves upwards of about twenty-seven percent. So. It goes in that order. I mean, it's even less than three percent. Commercial passenger also it consists of cars that about close to fourteen to fifteen percent. 
data is already there jay in the public domain in our au insight session it's available on our website sure sure sorry i missed that yeah so that's that's it sir thank you yeah all right thanks thank you As I know for the questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Asim Pant, VP Investor Relations, for closing comments. Thanks, thanks, Margaret, and thanks everyone for joining us and your support. Please reach out to the IIT for any further questions. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of AU Small Finance Bank, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.